it's a beautiful sunny day here today and we are working on the van again. We've got an amazing and exciting project today because as you know, or maybe you don't know, but I really love to read. So one of the priorities that I want is to have some form of bookshelf in my van. So today we're going to be doing that. We're gonna be working out how much space I would need. And then I'm hoping and aiming to go for a shelf up here that's going to be self-contained and have enough room for potentially 10 books. So I'm gonna show you what equipment I've got ready and yeah, I'm gonna attempt to make a bookshelf now so that it can fit up on this wall here, be contained, the books won't fall out and I will be happy and content to call my travels with a couple of books with me. Let's get started. So the equipment that I've just quickly rug rummaged together is drill for making some pilot holes, screwdriver, tape, pencil, square, my panel saw, a couple of screws, different bits, I'm not quite sure what I want but I've just put a couple in there. I've got different varying lengths of wood because I'm going to try and work out what I need but I don't really need a big depth amount for the sides and the back and everything so I've picked up a couple of pieces that are just lying around as random pieces and then this is going to be the front bar but it's basically it's very thin. These are the books that I'm wanting to try and get in and I thought if I grabbed a couple of my larger hardback books then anything paperback will also fit into the bookcase so I've grabbed a couple of those so that's that's them there. So they're quite quite large hardbacks and I want to get 10 on this shelf. So that's what we've, we're doing. So I've already measured what space I need and made some notes here. So it's going to be 39 and a half centimetres wide by 17 centimetres deep and then 24 and a half centimetres in height so we're going to try and make a box and then a front board across to stop them from flipping out especially when we break so that's the plan I'm gonna get started and see what happens also quick update Monty's joined me today so he's just getting used to lying in his bed he's a little bit afraid because it's all new and exciting still but he's just getting settled in and he's shaking a bit but hopefully as the day wears on you'll get more and more used to being in this little house. But I thought while we're doing this project today, he can be with me, he can see what I'm up to, get used to being in the area and enjoy the sunshine. So let's get started with this new project and hopefully by the end of today, I will have a snazzy new bookshelf. I've now got a much more sizable piece of wood. To go 39 and a half length. Mel's not here today either. He's helping my dad on a building job. So it means that I can do a few little projects without him getting in the way. So sorry, Mel, you're exiled from the van build today so that I can do my little jobs. <laughs> but at least I can get on and do that in the sunshine, get it all fitted and then paint it up ready so that when we work on the van back again tomorrow, it's all done and dusted and I'm not gonna get in his way either. Okay, so the measurements, I forgot to include the width for the side and back. So for this being 39 and a half in length, you want to add on whatever timbers you're using for the side. So this is the thickness of the timber that I'm gonna be adding on. So 39 and a half across to this measurement here. And then I'm just going to cheat and put down two marks to the sides. So this outer line is now my cut line. So I'm not gonna use that one. And then 17 is the width, which I've marked along the back here. But then I also want to add in another length. Whoops, nearly losing my measurements then. So I've got 17 along the back here, but then I also want to add in a back to it. So I'm gonna mark and line up where those marks are for the measurement. 
and then also add in the extra for the back piece. So now we've got this worked out and marked, we're just going to cut this out and it'll be great. That's all good, nice and smooth. So the next plan is to fit the sides There's and the back. Okay, we've got our piece of wood ready and cut and I've just sanded it off so it's nice and smooth. Now we're going to fit the two sides and then the back. So we're gonna measure this and then cut two pieces and I will show you that in a minute. And then what I'll do is I will drill holes, pilot holes, and we'll get it all screwed up nice. I've just finished cutting off the um, pieces for the sides. So we've got two pieces at 17 centimeter in length. One piece for the back, which is 43 and three quarters. And then we've got our original baseboard, which we're going to attach the two sides and the back. I'm going to just pre-drill some holes on the back and the two sides so that they don't split when it comes to screwing them in. So we're just gonna do that now and then we will screw this baby up. Okay, I've just propped up my um, sides on the bench here. So I'm just gonna quickly attach them, screw them together with a couple of screws, and then we'll do the sides. Fixing. There we go, that's better. So that's the, that's the back piece done, like so. I just put four screws in there. And then now I'm just pre-drilled three on this side, three on that side, and we'll just put some glue on the backs here that I've got. So I'm just gonna go and pop up and get the glue. Mel won't mind if I borrow a bit of his glue, just quick. So we're just gonna pop in a little bit on there and there and there and there. I probably should have done it on the other bit as well, but I wasn't thinking about that to start with. So yeah, with your project, before you start, just put a little bit of wood glue in and it'll just help seal it as well. Okay, I fixed it all together. So we've got the back and the two sides like so. I put a little bit of wood glue in the joints as well. So I'm just gonna wipe off all the excess and then we're gonna fit the front. We're gonna fit a protective slat across here, this little one, to stop the books or anything from falling out once we're driving. And then I'm going to cock all the joints in, leave it to dry, and then give it a lick of paint. And it is a job done. So we'll just get on and do that and I will show you the progress in a minute. Cut that off to length. I've just decided to get my fix all out to glue that front piece to the front of the board there so that it's more secure. So uh, yeah, high tech, secure and flexible. So let's do that.
So it's been about five minutes later. I've just caulked the shelf all the way around. So it's just sitting in the sun there, ready to dry. Welcome back. Well, it's been about a week since you saw the last lot of footage that I filmed all about my, wait for it, bookshelf. I've painted it all and done the bottom and the sides and everything. Stuck the front rail on to stop any books from falling out. And now we need to work out the height at which I'm going to be fitting it on the wall behind me here to see where it needs to go so that I can get the books in and out without it catching on the ceiling. So we're going to put the books in. These are a few of mine. I'm going to try my best not to drop it. And then Mel has brought in a couple of his ones that he wants to have in the van as well. So I've got to make sure that they fit his books too. Mm. That's gonna have to go that way. See, I can do that. And get them back in. <laughs> you know what, I think that looks really lovely. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark that up and uh, get it drilled in the actual shelf of the unit so that then when I fix it to the cladding it's not going to bust down and split the wood. So I'm going to just do that and then we'll finish off showing you the end result in a minute. Oh by the way there will be a video coming up soon all about the SeaTac because uh, this unfortunately blew up the other day and uh, We've discovered some information about solar panels and CTEC unit versus an MPPT charge controller, which I have here, this one. So if you're interested in that video, that will be coming up soon. So leave a comment down below in this video and make sure you sign up to receive the notifications so that when we do upload a video about this, you will be the first to know and you can read all about it because it's quite an important video so that you know not how to blow your CTEC up if you were to have one of these and which MPPT charger to go for to suit your solar panel wattage and input. Very interesting. So stay tuned for that one. Another thing, shout out to John at Alpha Batteries for providing me with a new CTEC. I contacted him as soon as I realised that that one had blown and he sent one out to me ASAP, free of charge, no quibbles, no questions asked. He was just superb in every way and I've got the new one installed like that. So thank you again to John at Alpha Batteries. And if you want anything for your van build or any queries, get in touch with John at Alpha Batteries and he will sort you out. And all I can say from him is that his expertise and his uh, customer service is fantastic. Thanks, John. Right, let's get drilling this baby. Also, shout out to Mel today. He's laid up in bed because he pulled something in his back earlier and poor thing, he's just lying in his bed having a rest today. So give this video a thumbs up and like it and share it with your friends so that we can send some support over to Mel and he knows that you've been watching my videos while he hasn't been able to make anything for his channel. Thank you, Mel. Take care and get better soon from all of us, hey? Got a triple check with the book. So let's see that one, if that's okay, where it is. Okay. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's one. Make it 
it's level. Make sure it's level rather. And I'm just going to be whacking that in. Making sure it's nice and tight. Not overly tight, but tight enough so it's holding. And I just need to check this side again. Right, there we go. Don't think that's going anywhere. And put me books in. I don't think any more is good for it. So there. So there we have it. There's a side profile. So this is enough width for 10 hardback books widthways and if you've got particular books that you want to fit in make sure that you fit your bookcase around the books rather than just doing a shape before thinking about what you want so for example this is a hardback standard hardback and that's a paperback so there's quite a big difference in terms of depth and also height so if you're only going to be planning on having paper books you could paperback books you could obviously raise the shelf higher but because i want hardback books and paperbacks i want enough room for both and you're not going to have enough height to get them in just straight in you're going to have to put all your books in sideways and then shuffle them in like this for example so you have to go this way out to get them and this way out rather than trying to get them in like so because you're going to have such a low shelf you're going to hit your head on it so you are going to have to go sideways and then shimmy them along. so anyway these are a couple of the books i'm wanting to read so this the first one is called year of the witching by alexis henderson that sounds good all about witch trials and someone finding a diary of their mothers and you know rediscovering their hidden past Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, all about his diverse and amazing take on his life and what he's achieved. I love him, so I want to read all about that. Now this one is Mel's. He wants me to put this in my van so that I can start cooking for him. And this is Martin Dory's cookbook, camper van cookbook to be precise. It's got really lovely photos and recipes and all sorts things let me just show you quickly inside so you've got <clears throat> beach combing locations what to do in the UK beaches you've got garlicky razor clams linguine with clams cockles mussels and watercress you've got lobsters let me just show you also you've got lovely photographs and mm, prune and sultana earl grey tea leaf that sounds delicious um, and it's a really lovely book lots of great photographs as well oh doesn't it make, make you miss van life or um, for me learn for van life because i am itching to get into this life because i've just been on the sidelines waiting for mine to start so i hope it's as good as what i think it will be but it's been a long time coming, what with lockdown and all. So yeah, th even this looks really fun. Make your own hammock. So this is a great little book, I think. I think that's lush. So even if you're going away for the weekend or with your family, this is a great little book to get hold of. And it's a thoroughly enjoyable read. So get yourself one of these. If you're interested, I can um, link it down below. So leave a comment if you're interested in that one. And then the other one of Mel's, which looks really good, is the Treasure Hunter's Handbook. And he wants me to read this so that I can go met, uh, metal detecting with him. And it's all about the treasures of the UK and how it's they've been discovered and how to actually go about um, finding treasure as well. So it's a guide as well as um, a history book so you can learn about the past treasure that's been found but also go out and actually use the tips and hints in this book to go out and find your own treasure so those are Mel's two two additions to the camper van 
and they're going to have pride of place up there like that. The Treasure Hunter's Handbook. And I've just quickly looked through this and it's really interesting. It goes through so many different types of treasure. Gold nuggets in Wales, Scottish gold. And at the back there's different areas where you can find fossils, the ages of the earth, where and how to search for treasure, like beach combing and looking in the land. Obviously Mel is into his metal detecting, so there's all about metal detecting in here. How to find meteorites, and then a glossary and index and stuff at the back if you wanted to do more reading about the subject. But, but um, he's got me hooked on reading this one now, so thanks Mel. But anyway, let's see if that fits as well. I've had to switch to my phone because my GoPro has just died, but anyway. There is the finished article of my bookcase and I am super pleased with it. It's come out exactly how I, how I wanted and it's also room for my hardback books and my paperback books, even though these two are Mel's and he's kind of stolen some of my storage space already, so I think I might have to move them somewhere else, but we'll, we'll see. Sorry Mel. Um, like and comment down below if you think it's a good idea or if you've got any more tips on how I can improve this. But this is what I originally had in mind and I'm super pleased with it. Just a bit of wood and it's suited me really well. And I just think it looks really sweet. It also doesn't poke out, oops, sorry. It doesn't poke out too far. Obviously, if you've got a different arrangement going on in your van, then you might not be able to have that there because you might hit yourself as you come into the van. But because I've got this arrangement and I'm coming up into the van here, this is over the seating area. So you're gonna be sat there, you can just reach up and get a book and then lounge feet out here. Video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because liking it really does help me out. So the more thumbs, the better for you guys, because I can carry on making more content and interesting videos. I hope they're interesting for you. They're certainly interesting for me to make. I have got a few other ideas of things that I want to do to this wall. So the final reveal of it will be in my next video. So stay tuned for that one. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. on. <laughs>